Welcome to the television ministry of Souls Harbor Tabernacle. We are located in the shadow of beautiful Crowder's Mountain, 271 Camp Rotary Road, Gastonia, North Carolina. Now be blessed by the anointed ministry of Pastor James Chambers and Church. Well, praise the Lord. So good to be with you tonight. This is Pastor Chambers from Souls Harbor Tabernacle in Gastonia, North Carolina, with our Saturday night, our fifth Saturday night service here at the TV station. And we're so glad to be with you tonight. And the program has been pre-recorded. We believe the anointing we feel now, you'll feel when you watch it. Amen. I want to invite you to church in the morning, uh, Sunday morning worship at 11 o'clock, Sunday night worship at 6 o'clock, and Wednesday night worship at 7 o'clock. Be glad to have you at any of those services. Amen. And we'd just be so glad to have you. Amen. And we have a great church in Mooresboro, Brother Chuck Poole and his wife Joyce labor for the Lord there. A good church and you'd be blessed and they're they're looking for you to come and be with them sunday uh, in the morning at 11 o'clock tomorrow night at six o'clock and thursday night at seven o'clock and if you drive over to dallas north carolina find another great souls harbor church where there quinn and his wife arlene have a good church there and god is blessing them and they'd be glad to see you in the morning at 11 o'clock tomorrow night at six and tuesday night at seven You'll be so blessed at either one of the services, and I'd be glad to see you in the morning. Be glad to hear you went to one of the other churches. We're just uh, doing this together. We're in this for the kingdom of God. You'll hear the word preached, and I believe you'll be made welcome. And I welcome you tonight to the TV broadcast. I, I pray you'll be blessed tonight. Uh, I want to dedicate the first song to uh, all the church folks, all three of the churches, to the other two pastors and their wives, and all my family, my children, my grandkids. I just pray you'll be blessed as we sing a song for you now that the Lord has laid on our heart for tonight. Amen. Praise the Lord. A rich man don't have no diamonds to bring, and I'm not one for sale that I can do anything. Cause I'm nothing, nothing but no one, just one more grain of sand. Except for the touch of the master's strong hand. Well, I feel the touch of the master's strong hand. And it's leading me on through this way. Steps would falter too wide the gulf to spend, except for the touch of the master's strong hand. Well, if you search for every answer. Just can't comprehend. If your everyday burdens they seem to fall without end. If in your life full of empty, there you helpless and helplessly stand. Just wait for the touch of the master's strong hand. No songs here me. Well, I feel the touch of the master's strong hand, and it's leading me on. 
wish we were rich somehow. My footsteps would falter to wide the gulf to spend. Except for the touch of the master's strong hand. Footsteps have all died. Well, my footsteps would falter to wide the gulf to stand. Except for the touch, thank God, of a master strong hand. Well, praise the Lord. Hope you enjoyed that song. I feel that song. I'm nothing, nothing but no one. Ain't got any gold to bring tonight. But when I feel the touch of the Master's strong hand, uh, things just brighten up and the road lightens and everything comes together. I thank God for his touch. Hope you enjoyed that song tonight. Uh, I want to ask as I do every week between the two songs, don't forget about us if you can help us with the support of this ministry. Uh, we've been on four times this month, and God supplied the need thus far. But we ask people to stand with us for ten with ten dollars a month. And if you can do that, uh, you can mail it one time a month, or you can, if you're blessed to have it at all at one time, you can send it in for your whole year. And if God blesses you to do more later, that would be wonderful. But that's what we ask for, because a hundred people doing that will pay the bills for this broadcast. And uh, we, we're so thankful for what God's done. Don't have a hundred people obligated. Don't even have a hundred ten dollars offered. But we have a good bit because we have folks that give more than ten dollars. And we appreciate it, all you do. Never got to give too little. And I don't think ever got one too big. We just appreciate what you give us. We put it together. And God will bless you. Write that dress down. Write us this week. If you can include love, give us your would Appreciate it. But you can write us a card. You can write a letter with no money in it. We're just glad to hear from you. And uh, we appreciate you being with us tonight. Also have the email address there on the screen. You can email us. We got some of those last week. Shared prayer requests with some of the callers. And we're just believing God to touch you tonight. Whatever you need, uh, call us, email us. We'll be glad to hear from you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Call that number on the screen. I might have already failed to tell you to do that. But it's there on the screen. Have a lot of regular callers, and last week we had some new one-time callers. If you're listening for the first time, you're enjoying the Souls Harbor TV Ministries, why don't you just text in and tell us and meet us in church in the morning. We had a couple of ladies come last week that said they had been faithfully listening to the broadcast, and we was glad to have them. Hope they come back. I'd like to see you there in the morning, uh, there or either one of the churches of Souls Harbor. We'd be glad to have you. God bless you as our prayer tonight. I want you to worship. Sister Chambers is going to come back and sing another old song for us tonight. Uh, we like these old songs. Amen. Uh, that song that I sang goes back many years, and this one goes back a few years, too. I'm sure you'll enjoy it and remember it. Amen, Sister Chambers. Amen. Praise God. So I was thinking about this song today. I was thinking, I don't care who you are, if you're the president of the White House or just somebody standing by the wayside in the outhouse or the queen in the palace or the person in the prison, everybody's trying to find some peace of mind. You know, with all the troubles and problems that we have today going on, you know, in your in your life, in your health, in your finance, or wherever, everybody's just looking for a little bit of peace of mind. And, you know, you can find that in Jesus. He'll give it to you. Amen.
saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thought of his heart was on evil continually and it repented the Lord that he made man on the earth and it grieved him in his heart and the Lord said I will destroy them uh, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air for it repented me that I made them but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. What a wonderful verse. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God. I want to talk to you for a few minutes, just a little short sermon, just have a little bit of time to preach it. God had his blessings on the reading of the word. As I preach to you just for a few minutes, walking with God when the world has walked away. Amen. Walking with God when the world has walked away. I tell you, I think today, if you're one of those few that are walking with God, it's surely in a time when the world has walked away, walked another way. Amen. There's five verses here describe what the world was doing, or verse five, excuse me, describes what the world was doing. It said the wickedness of man was great on the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil, continually. Amen. And I'm telling you, that's where we're at. It seems like it's so easy for, uh, you know, somebody to devise an evil scheme, an evil plan, an evil scheme, an evil plan, 
uh, something that would go against God or the people of God and put it in the focus or put it in the motion. Focus and motion. Amen. Verse 6 tells us how God feels about that. Verse 6 says that it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart. And the Bible tells us not to grieve the Holy Spirit. It says that God is a spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. So we're not to grieve God. Amen. No more than you'd like to grieve your own earthly mom or dad. Uh, would you want to grieve your heavenly father? Amen. Because he made us and created us and without him we would not be here. Nothing that we have would be here. No things that we enjoy in life uh, from the uh, material things of cars and houses and land and the personal things that only God can give you like your family, your wife and children. Thank God for them. Amen. We enjoy those things and we thank God for it. Uh, but, uh, you know, we should never want to grieve him. Amen. Never want to grieve him at all. Verse 7 tells us what is ahead for those who walk away from God. I guess one of the most evident things you see here is if Noah walked with God and Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord, you and I can do that today in an evil and perverse generation that we live in today. But uh, it tells us what God said he would do with that. Amen. Uh, you know, that uh, ahead for those who walk away from God. He said in verse 7, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, most both man and beast. Amen. Uh, we may not like that, but God didn't run that by me or run it by you. He just simply said that he's going to destroy those that walk away from him and don't come back to him. In John chapter 6, verse 66, we find where some of the disciples walked away from him, not the twelve, but some of the others walked away from him that were following him and uh, walked with him no more. And if they never got that fixed, they're in hell today. Amen. If they walked away from God, and never went back, and the Bible doesn't record that they did, and if they just kept walking the wrong way like these people did, they met up with destruction and judgment, amen, and we will too someday, because it is a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the living God, and we can't do it. And he said, I'll destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast. I'm telling you, you just don't want to walk away from God in this trouble and perverse generation, you want to walk with God. Amen. Verse 8 turns the page and tells us what will exempt us from this destruction. What will get us to miss this instruction, destruction. Amen. Instruction to miss the destruction. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Verse uh, 8 tells us. Amen. And uh, I, I thank God for that. I, it just gives me hope. I mean evil all around us, amen, destruction all around us, chaos all around us, everybody you meet has got some, some kind of crisis going in, in their life, and if you didn't uh, join up and be part of it, it, it could actually worry you to death if you didn't look to God, who is our uh, maker and creator, the one, the Bible said, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, amen, I'm glad we can do that, amen, you have to do that. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Verse 9 tells us how he found this grace or this grace of exemption. Amen. That grace that caused him to get exempted from that number that God said he was going to destroy that he had created because uh, he would even repent that he made them. The Bible says in verse 9, and I like this, four words, Noah walked with God. That'll get you out of trouble. Just walk with God. How to get you out of trouble. If you'll just walk with him and talk with him and fellowship with him, I'm telling you, you'll stay so busy with that, you won't have time to fellowship with the world. The Bible said, David said in Psalms 1, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Amen. Nor standeth in the way of sinners. You choose your friends. Choose who you're going to walk with. Because the Bible says, What fellowship does light have with darkness or a God with Baal? And it also tells us that two can't walk together unless they be agreed. So walk in the Spirit. Amen. Stay free in the Spirit and walk with God. Amen. Don't take any steps. He don't go with you. Amen. And don't, don't, don't walk without Him and don't go anywhere without Him. Amen. These are the generations of Noah, it says. This walk with God included his family. 
Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations, it says. Amen. In his generations. His walking with God and teaching the family well became a way out for his eight-member family. Amen. It was a way out for them to get out of the trouble that faced this world. I think that we live in grace today and it's totally, completely, you know, individual status with God. But I think that it was in that day that God held people accountable. But I believe that Noah taught them well. I believe that Noah walking with God, being a just man, the Bible said, and an honest man, all that he was, amen, that he taught his family well. And it paid off for him, amen. As I said, this eight-member family missed the trouble that they was destined to find had they not had they not or had they walked away from God or that they would have found. But Noah and his wife, Sham, Ham, Japheth, and three wives, their three wives, according to chapter 7 and verse 7, made it out of that troubled land. Amen. Amen. And got on the ark. Amen. Jimmy Swagger used to sing uh, songs that come into the ark. The sky grows dark. Amen. I believe that that's what you need to do. You just need to come into the ark today. And those people went in, those eight people went in at the command of God. But I believe before the door was shut, there could have been some others got in. And that's where you stand tonight. If you're not walking with God, before you get to the place that you meet up with the destruction or you get in the, that you grieve God and get in the wrath of God, amen, before you ever get there, the door to heaven is wide open tonight. Amen. Why do I believe it's wide open? Because Romans said, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. And if you get in, God will take care of you. If you remember the pool, the pool of Bethesda, the man who was there, he was waiting for the angel to come down and trouble the water. If God's dealing with you tonight and you're not walking with God, it'd be a good time to start while I'm talking. Amen. Start walking up the King's Highway and just get in touch with God. You remember the man that was by the pool of Bethesda, I started to say. The Bible said the angel came down at a certain time and troubled the waters. And whosoever got in was healed of whatsoever they had. And I thought, that's opening the door wide open, whoever and whatever. Amen. Amen. And God does that for us tonight. Those that would call upon the name of the Lord, whosoever shall be Saved. I believe that's important. I love these verses there. Shem, Ham, Japheth, and their three wives, and Noah's wife got in. Chapter 7, verse 7. Amen. I thought that was pretty good, 7 being God's number. Amen. I want to keep me and my family in chapter 7, verse 7. Amen. I don't want to file chapter 7 or chapter 13 bankruptcy, but I want to keep my family in the care that was provided for Noah his three sons, his wife, and their wives in chapter 7 of Genesis and verse 7. Amen. When it said Noah went in. Amen. And his what sons and his wife and his son's wife with him in the ark because of the waters of the flood. Amen. God made a way and he's made a way for you tonight. Whatever you're going through, wherever you're at, he's made a way. You just have to be like the prophet of old who said for me and my house we're going to serve the Lord Amen. if you want to serve the world you want the things of the world you can have them they're out there they're available Betty and I used to sing a song uh, said I know the world will take me back but I'm glad I'm on this track I'm glad I'm not going that way I'm glad I'm not walking because I found out hallelujah that walking with God when the world has walked away from God Gives you great benefits. Amen. Amen. There's a great reward in walking with God. Uh, one of the things that it will be a great reward is to get to heaven. But when you get there, you'll be rewarded with the words of God that says, uh, enter into the joys of the Lord. Amen. Thou good and faithful servant. That's what Noah was. That's why he got in. That's why he got into the ark. That's why God blessed him. And, uh, and then he had some trying days in the ark. And, you know, it looked like the, the, the water wasn't going down. You know, the story uh, sent the bird out and he come back and, and didn't find any branch or nothing, didn't find nothing. He came back and I imagine the enemy said, well, you're in the ark, but you're going to eat up all that food and die. You're not going to make it out of this ark. I'm sure the enemy talked to him just like he talks to us today. 
But uh, the Bible says in Genesis chapter 8, verse 1, one of my favorite verses in the Bible says, And God remembered Noah. Amen. Amen. So if God remembered Noah, that gives me great encouragement tonight that I'm not in an ark tonight with a bunch of animals and seven family members, but I'm in a world full of lost and dying people that I'm trying to get saved, that I'm trying to steer the right way to come to Jesus. That's why I preach. That's why we have the TV ministry. That's why we have Souls, Heart, and Guest, Tonya, Mooresboro, and uh, Dallas, because we're preaching tonight to get people saved. Jesus didn't come to get you. If he had, you'd done been God. Amen? Because he's given them enough reason along with me. We've all sinned. The Bible said it comes short of the glory of God. But he's always got an ark. He's always got a way. The Bible said God is faithful and would not allow you to be tempted above that you're able to bear. But with the temptation, he would make a way of escape that you don't have to bear. For Noah, Shem, Shem, and Hapat, and their wives and his wife, it was the ark. And for me and my family, it's this church that we've been in for 42 years. We, we give our heart to it, give our life to it, give our heart to God. Don't misunderstand that. But I, I put everything I've got into pastoring this church. This year, at the end of the year, will be 42 years. And I thank God for it. And I'm not doing it but for one reason, uh, mainly to hear him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. That, that somebody could write about me after I'm gone and heaven's, It'll be written down that James Chambers walked with God. Amen. And God rewarded me richly. Amen. When I get there and see the family circle's not broken, see my wife's there and I'm there, and my kids and their uh, companions, my grandkids and their companions that made it, uh, you know, it'll be worth it. One songwriter said it'll be worth it all. Amen. Time's about gone. But let me just tell you tonight that whatever you're going through, if you just keep walking with God, you just keep walking with God. You will not be sorry. You'll never, you'll be at the end of this life singing in heaven someday. I don't regret a mile I'll travel for the Lord. Don't regret a time I've trusted his word. Sing the years go by, many days without a song. Don't regret a mile I'll travel for the Lord. Walking with God when the world's walked away has a great reward tonight. If you're not, start walking. If you are, be encouraged tonight. Father, encourage those that are walking. Those that are not walking, get them to start walking with God. And as the first example in the Bible was, no walking with God, we can walk with you. And we can see you face to face. Not only you, all those in heaven, all the loved ones that's going on. It'll be worth every mile of the trip. And I'm sure I can say that now. And I'm sure I'll say it. And I'll see what waits. I have not seen him, not heard him. He's in the heart of man what God has in store. In Jesus' name, we're going to find out. We won't be on next Saturday night, so first Saturday night of the month. In two weeks from now, we'll be back. Be praying for us, write us, and God bless you as we go off tonight. Good night. Thank you for joining us on the telecast. Pastor Chambers, wife Betty, and the entire congregation welcome you to any of our exciting services. Morning worship, 11 a.m., Sunday evening, 6 p.m., and Wednesday at 7. Tune in next time.